What's up guys, Shannon here. Welcome back to another YouTube video. If you plan to work with a local service business or if you are already working with a local service business, this is for you. This is especially useful if you are planning to pitch somebody and by offering this, your clients will be amazed with what you know because of the steps I'm gonna show you. So it seems like you guys like this kind of video. So without further ado, let's get started. Now I have already ask ChatGPT to come up with a niche that I can go into. And you can see this is the random healthcare niche that I can go into. I have already worked with dentistry. I've already shown a few examples of dentistry. So I'm going to show you chiropractic clinics instead. And as usual, we are going to go over to Google, type in chiropractor. And this time around, we are in the UK market. I'm going to show an example from the UK market. And as usual, we are going down the list, going down to number 19, which is my favorite number. And this is the website that we are going to be working with today, which is riversidechiropractic.co.uk. So let me get started. Now, I'm going to be using this template here, and I'm still building out this template, but essentially it's, you know, going through with you step by step on how to use this template to actually offer kind of like a tripwire offer to your clients. And you can actually charge like a small amount for this, like, you know, 100 to 200 bucks. Or you can offer this up for free to show them the value that you will bring. And this is going to amaze them because a lot of the stuff that I'm going to mention here, it's stuff that you can find actually on your own and showing your clients that you have already done research, you know their business, you know what kind of marketing channels they are running, you know what kind of CMS they are going with, you know, what are their locations, they are serving their markets, their main services and product, what is the main KPI to them and what's the main call to action, like all this stuff, even without them telling you. And if you can go through this process and when you're speaking to them, you're talking in terms of their language, they're going to be amazed by what you have done, right? So trust me, a lot of these generic site audits, it's not going to work out. So the first thing that I'll do is I will duplicate this. So this is still a work in progress, but if you think that this is going to be helpful, let me know and I'll release it out to you guys. So the first thing that I'll do is duplicate this. And once I've duplicated, I'm just going to rename this with the website and then make sure that this is the template that we are working with. All right. So first of all, I'm going to just include in the website here, the business name is going to be Riverside Chiropractic Group. Sometimes, um, you can just scroll down all the way to the bottom corner and you can see this is the actual company, right? So Riverside Chiropractic Group Limited. I'm going to copy and paste this. Okay, and markets. So markets is essentially which countries that they are targeting. And you really want to know which country they are targeting because some businesses, they target multiple countries, whereas some only target specific countries. And for this one, it seems like they are only targeting UK specifically in one location. So I am I'm going to put UK as their main target and location. I want to see whether they are serving multiple locations or just one single location. Um, it seems like they are only serving one location, which is Aberdeen. Okay, again, I'm going to type this in. And then for the main service or products, if you are running for, if you are doing this for local service based business, chances are their main, you know, their main offerings will be a service, right? But I have seen before some local businesses, their main, their main offerings are actually products where they sell, you know, they sell like products for, for their business. And so from here, this example here, their means, this is actually, yeah, they also sell courses. So this is what I mean here. Right, so this, this, they sell courses here as well. If you click on book now. Yeah, so they do sell courses and mental health care, online consultation. So they also do consulting for mental health, you know, and let's go in and take a look. Monthly offer, free call with chiropractor, first visit video. Yeah. So I'm noticing a few services here, but I think the main, the main appointment. So when I click on appointment, what happens? 
So this is actually interesting. So they do have more than one clinic, right? Because from what I'm seeing here, it seems like they're in Aberdeen. But I think these are different areas within Aber Aberdeen, right? Yeah. So they have two clinics here. And then I think this is another location. So I'm going to put this in here. Um, yeah, so these are the different locations that they are serving. These two are in Aberdeen, so which is fine. Yeah, so let's see. If I want to select this, what happens? Okay, so these are all the different services that they offer. Right, and this is, this, this is the kind of research that I want to do because this will allow me to, when I speak to the client, right, I can let them know that, hey, we're not just trying to bring leads to you guys, but we're trying to bring, you know, chiropractic lead. We're trying to bring acupuncture leads, you know, because these are all the different services that they offer. So what is their main service here? So I would, I would think that their main service is going to be their chiropractic. Their main chiropractic consultation or chiropractic treatment, right? Anything to do with chiropractic, I think that's kind of like their main service and product. Now, in this case, it's very obvious because I'm doing this for a chiropractic clinic, but you know, depending on what business you are doing this for, the main service or products will change, obviously. So what I also want to do, right, is I also want to list down, you know, a, a bunch of stuff here. Uh, I'm not going to, because they have like a lot of services here, right? A lot of different types of services. And all these are kind of like mini services that they do. I am, let me see if I can copy all of this. I do, I can copy all of this. I'm going to paste all of this in here. Yeah. And this is going to be really helpful for me. Okay. And the reason why is because when I have a conversation with them, again, I'm trying to speak their language, right? So I can let them know like, you know, if I were to do this for them and if I hop on a call with them, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask them like, hey, I know that you guys are a chiropractic clinic. Probably your main service that you guys are trying to focus on are your, is your chiropractic treatment. But apart from that, you know, you guys also have acupuncture. You guys also have like um, hypnotherapy, laser therapy and shockwave therapy, those kind of stuff, right? Are there any services that you would want to prioritize on? or focus on because when you speak a language like this, right, it lets, it lets them know that keep in mind that you have not gotten all this information from them, right? You actually go in and done this research. That's why you will know all these services. And if you can do that by having this conversation with them, it's already giving you a lot of plus points because it's showing them that you have done your homework. You've gone to their website. You have messed around with their website. You have gone in and click and look at their actual services that they are offering, right? And also at the same time, earlier on, like I found, they also do have courses, right? So they also do offer courses as well, which I also want to go in and take a look, All right? So Ninja Train, book now. Let's see. So yeah, it doesn't seem like their courses are... Um, are very obvious. Yeah, it doesn't seem like their courses are very obvious. So some some clinics, oh yeah, yeah, so they do have courses as well, but it's only for this specific locations, right? So what I am going to do also, services offered, And we also have, I'm just going to list down courses here. Then the next thing I'm going to do, right, is I'm also going to write down in some notes the different, different clinics, different locations offer different services, right? And the reason why I want to note this down, okay, is because whatever that we are doing for one location, right? Whatever service or whatever traffic uh, that we want to drive for a single location will be different from another location simply because, you know, if let's say shortwave therapy is not, is only in one location, the rest of the location, we don't have to rank for this like shockwave, shockwave therapy and then a location name because it doesn't make sense if that location doesn't offer this service, right? So that's why I want to list down all the notes that I can find here. 
Okay. And then the next thing to do is I want to look at their main KPI. So there are a lot of different KPIs. So for example, if we were to do a SEO, if we were to do SEO for this clinic, obviously the main purpose for SEO, um, one of the main metric is to increase their organic traffic, but organic traffic doesn't necessarily translate to um, what moves the needle for this business. What actually moves the needles for this business is depending on, you know, are they trying to get more leads, right? Are they trying to get more online sales? And then some businesses, the, the main KPI is to get more traffic, right? So one way to look at the main KPI is basically going over to their, their website again and then just trying to see what, what are they trying to get people to do, right? So book an appointment. So they want people to basically book an appointment with them and actually pay for the service, right? So, yep. So for example, let me, let me check this. Yeah, so they do want people to, let me see, select. Okay. Yeah, it seems like they want people to um, book an appointment via forms, right? So all these will probably, online prepayments are ineligible and they must be used for credit, right? So it's probably going to be leads, okay? And you just want to make sure because not all the time it's going to be leads. Like I mentioned, I have seen before local businesses, they actually, their main KPIs are actually online sales. They are trying to sell kind of like their services as products, right? So they actually have an e-commerce section. They are the local business service have a e-commerce function on their website and they're trying to get online sales and it's not leads that they're trying to get. Right, so in this case, it seems like it's leads because they're trying to get people to book now. And the main call to action here, so you want to go in to the site and you just want to take a look at what is the main call to action here. So you can see, register your interest for monthly offer, book an appointment, Right. Some of the call some of the call to actions you can see here are phone calls, form submissions, chat. In this case, it's gonna be form submissions as the main one because you know majority of their, their site is listing now as form submission. So let's go and see other therapy. Yeah, so this is also a form submission as well. And you would think that you know a local site like this, um had phone calls are probably important, but you can see their main call to action here, right? They have both of these are form submissions, even booking an appointment is form submissions. And this is kind of like their main call to action, right? Which, you know, I would recommend if let's say they are a local business, I would recommend having calls, having phone calls as the call to action. But, you know, we're trying to gather information for now and recommend to have phone calls as a call to action, right? As a main call to action. Now, if you look at the site here, right? They actually do have a number to call, but it's not a clickable item, right? It's not a, it's not a clickable uh, item. Ideally, what I would want is for, let's see, where's their location page? Yeah, so they don't have, I don't think they have location page pan out, but I would want individual location pages Yeah, I would want individual location pages and having the numbers for each individual location to have it on that location page, right? But they don't have, they don't have any, so it's fine. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to look at the tech stack. Now, the reason why I want to look at tech stack is because of two main reasons. Number one, if you can let a, a business owner know what website, you know, what what platform they build their website on, what are the plugins they use and stuff like that without them telling you. Again, it's going to show them that you have done your homework, you've done your research before, you know, speaking to them, right? That's first. Second of all, when you, under when you understand your tech stack, you're kind of preempting and preparing yourself in terms of what is needed to be done, all right? So for example, if you find that the, the site is built on WordPress, then you would know you know, there's going to be plugins involved. You're going to be looking at plugins. You're going to be looking at page builders, for example, right? If it's a custom coded site, then, you know, your involvement comes in when you, you're probably going to be working with a developer because all the implementations that needs to be done will probably be done by the developer, right? Because it's a custom coded site. 
right? So similarly, if it's built on, you know, CMSs like Duda, Wix, Squarespace, you know what are the things that you need to do on a specific platform, right? And how you do that is actually very simple. You can go and uh, download this Chrome extension. So build with, right? So go over to, so go over to build with Chrome extension. This is the extension that you want to download. Okay, once you have this, what you're going to do is you're going to go over to the Chrome extension and just simply click on the Chrome extension. So it's going to tell you a bunch of stuff as well. And what you're trying to do is, again, you're trying to collect as much information as much as possible. And so you can see they have Analytics 4 installed, which is good. Facebook Pixel, which means they kind of, they should be running some kind of Facebook ads. MailChimp, ReCAPTCHA, Google Tag Manager, PHP. So it seems like this site is built on PHP, which is probably custom coded. Yeah, so I'm not seeing any kind of CMSs here. Email provider, they're using Cloudflare, Cloudflare DNS. So yeah, it seems like this is a custom coded site. So this is a good indication because when you are letting them know about your involvement, if let's say you're the will be working together with this business, right? The conversation with me to them will be, you know, um, because your site is custom coded, um, you probably have a developer that you're working with. So what we would do is we'll push out all the recommendations and your developer will implement them. And then we will go in and review all the implementations, which means we will not be doing the implementation, right? And then it can also be revolving around like, oh, you guys are, if, you, if they don't have a developer and if they want to work with you, then because you only work with, let's say, WordPress or, you know, other platforms, then you can let them know that you can migrate their site over to WordPress and stuff like that. But this is how you actually plan out you know, you're thinking already about the paths to working together simply because of understanding where their website is, you know, and how you're going to implement all these changes, right? So it's also preparing you in advance if let's say you're working with a site like this. So it seems like this is a custom coded site and probably on PHP from what I'm seeing. Okay, so this is for the tech stack, okay? The next thing that I want to find out is I want to find out the rest of the marketing channels that they are involved in. And again, going back to the same reason why is because if I let them know that they are already running these ads, right? And how can SEO be a supplement to all this? How can SEO help with all these different channels? Um, that is going to make more sense to them because I don't have to ask them, you know, what are they running any kind of ads, right? Because I already know, right? And if you can give this information to the people that you are going to work with, it's going to again, show them that you've done your research, you have done, you have spent time to understand their business, you have spent time to understand what are they currently doing in their business. Okay, so there are a few things I like to check. First of all, LinkedIn ads, I, I want to check whether uh, they are running any kind of LinkedIn ads. I want to check whether if they are running any kind of Facebook ads, TikTok ads, as well as Google ads, right? So for local businesses, probably you're not, you're not going to find LinkedIn ads because you know LinkedIn is small for a B2B platform. Um, for a business to business platform. So um, this may not make sense for a local service site. Facebook and Instagram is probably where you're going to find most of them running the ads on. Um, similar with TikTok. However, TikTok is very difficult to find a specific business, right? You cannot find TikTok ads for a specific business. And that's why like it's a, kind of like a hit, hit or miss for TikTok ads, which later on I'll show you, unless you're using third party tools, which is going to cost you money. But I'll show you, you know, some an example of what I mean for TikTok ads. And then on Google ads, obviously, this is for local service business. This is where they are going to be running most of their ads. So for local service sites, Facebook and Google ads is probably where they're going to be running most of their ads. Okay. So let's start off with LinkedIn ads first. There's two ways that you can check. First of all, you can go over to this link and this will bring you to the ad library for LinkedIn. And what you can do is you can basically either type in their website, click on search. Right, so it doesn't have any results or you can type in their business name, which I already have it over here. Okay, and click on search. So it doesn't seem like they have um, any kind of uh, LinkedIn ads. Another way you can do this is um, going over to the uh, social. So if they have socials over here, if they have LinkedIn, you can actually click on their LinkedIn profile. So let me see if I can find their LinkedIn profile. So for example, this is their LinkedIn profile, right? You can click on post and then over here, you can see view ad library. Right. When you click on it, it will show you whether this company has ran any kind of LinkedIn ads before. So you can see here, there's nothing here. Okay. So in this case, we can move on to the next one, which is Facebook and Instagram ads. So for Facebook and Instagram ads, you can go into this link. This will bring you to the Facebook ads library. 
you can change the location, you can change the ad category and choose the ad category to find. That's one, but there's another easier method, which is going over to the Facebook group, Facebook page of the business. So in this case, like this Facebook, this, this Facebook group is down, right? So they may have changed their URL, but forgot to update the URL here. So I'm going to see whether I can find them here, Riverside Chiropractor Clinic. Yeah. So I think this is the, I think this is the clinic, right? Yeah. So this is the Facebook page. So once you reach the Facebook page, just click on about and then over here at page transparency, this will show you whether this page is running any kind of ads, right? So if it's running any kind of ads, what you want to do is click on see all and you want to go to ad library. Okay. This will show all the kind of different ads that they are running currently. And if you want to see if they have ran any kind of ads in the past, you can also click on the filter out the active button and yeah, showing you whether, you know, they are running any kind of Facebook ads. Now, this is really good, not just for SEO, right? And the reason why is because if you notice that they are not running any kind of LinkedIn ads, any kind of Facebook ads and any ads at all, this is actually another service offering that you can offer to them to help them run their Facebook ads or Google ads or whatever ads that they are missing out on, right? So seems like they are not running uh, Facebook as well. So I'll go over to TikTok. And as I mentioned earlier with TikTok, it's kind of a hit and miss. If you want to go to TikTok Creative Center, Right, and then on inspiration, click on top ads. This is where you can actually type in a brand name or a keyword, but it's not really that useful. Um, it's not, uh, it is very difficult for you to find specific ads that this website is running. So one thing that um, you can do is again, key in the URL, hit search. Okay, and obviously you want to change this to the region, which is United Kingdom. Okay, and you can see like, it's going to show any relevancy to this URL, but it's not, it's not relevant, right? You can see all this ads is not relevant to the business. Another way is you can type in the business name to see if you have any luck there. So I have the business name here. So I'm going to type in the business name here. Okay. So it doesn't seem like there is any, yeah. So it doesn't seem like I can find any, you can see all of these are not the brand that I'm looking for the business that I'm looking for. So in this case, I'm going to mark it as I'm not going to mark this as well. Right. Sometimes when you search for a brand name, when you search for the URL, you, you will be able to find the businesses, TikTok ads here. And if you do, then that's great. Right. If you don't, that's fine as well. The next thing that you want to do is you want to find Google ads to see whether this business or website is running any kind of Google ads. And you can do that by simply going over to this link here, open it up. This will open up the Google ads transparency center, change this to the different filter it by the region. And then you want to type in either the business name or the website. Okay. So I'm going to type in the website here, see whether this is the website and I'm going to click open and you can immediately see these are the types of Google ads that this business is running. So I do know now that they are spending their marketing budget on Google ads, right? They are not using Facebook. Okay. So based, just based off on this section alone, when I speak to them, I'm already going to know which markets they are serving what specific locations they are, that they want to target their service in, right? They want more leads in Mint Law. They want more leads in Aberdeen. They want more leads in Old Meldrum. And the main services that they are trying to offer is probably going to be chiropractic treatment. But in terms of understanding from them, what is their main service? I want to ask them, you know, is any of your other services like your shockwave therapy, sports massage, you know, clinical psychology, are all these services, I know these services are important, but are there any ones that you want us to focus on? Because I also know that based off on your different locations, there's um, different services that you offer within a location, right? And also, um, it seems like you guys also have uh, courses as well. So is that something that you want us to focus on, right? And then for their main KPI, you know, majority of them, you know, it seems like you want your customers to, you know, come in as leads because based off of what we find, you guys want people to submit a lot of forms. You also kind of have a, a phone number there, but it's not really prominent. So is that your main KPI, right? You can see all of this information revolves around them, revolves around understanding their business. It revolves around speaking their language, right? And if I were to add in like, is it, if we were to work together, right? Because your website is custom coded, it's not built on any CMSs. So I will assume that, you know, you guys have a developer that you're working with or you have worked with a developer in the past, right? Because when it comes to implementing or changing a custom, a custom coded site, 
it's going to be challenging unless you have a developer, right? So if we were to work together, then what we would do is we'll provide the recommendations and your developer will be the one implementing things while we'll guide him along the way, uh, him or her, and then we'll be the one reviewing all these implementations. Would you be comfortable with that, with that arrangement, right? And also last but not least, I noticed that you guys are also running Google Ads. How is that working out so far, right? So you can see all of this information is just based off on understanding the business, the person that you are talking to. Having generic, you know, site audits, having generic stuff is not going to make sense for them because people want to know that you have done your research. People want to know that you care about their business. So once you have completed all of this, the next thing to do is to look at their organic performance currently and you want to take a benchmark, okay? So in order to do this, you need to have some kind of SEO tool. And what you do is simply plug in the website. And I want to take a look at their organic performance, right? So first of all, I want to record a DR, which is 30. And then look at the number of organic keywords that they are ranking for, 240. And then organic traffic. Now, one thing to take note is if you look at the overall location, right? The metric that you want to take notice of is the specific market. So let's say, for example, majority of the traffic share is coming from Australia. Then I do not want to take all these numbers because it's irrelevant to the business that I'm going to work with, right? So in this case, if let's say it's UK, you can then go in and filter out by UK. But because majority of the data is already showing UK, then I don't have to change this, right? But if you see like, let's say 97.7% .7 is Australia, then you want to go in and you want to change this out to UK because all these metrics will then be filtered for UK specifically, which is where our target market is. And then I want to take a record of their organic traffic, which is 523, the number of backlinks, which is 49. Okay, and the organic growth performance, which means, you know, how are they performing throughout their, their you know, entire lifetime, right? So you can see in June 2020, 2015, this website is already live. It has been live for quite a while now. And you can see like the website is not, it's not growing, right? It has been stagnant for, you know, the last few years. And in fact, it has grown a little bit, but this was the same trajectory in November and then it dropped that back down again. So it's really telling me that there's a lot of opportunities for us to go, go after here. So I'm going to list down as performance, no growth in organic traffic, right? And so the next thing I want to do is identify what is the main keyword. Okay, so for a chiropractic site, obviously the main keyword will be some kind of keyword related to, you know, chiropractor, chiropractic cleaning and stuff like that, right? But it's quite obvious for a service-based business like that. And what I want to do is go over to their keywords and you can see Riverside Chiropractic. So this is probably the name of the brand, Acupuncture Aberdeen, Chiropractor Aberdeen, right? So you can select one that you think will make, it, it makes the most sense. Okay, so I'm going to select this chiropractor Aberdeen. Okay, because this is a chiropractor in Aberdeen, which is very, very relevant, right? So chiropractor Aberdeen and what is the performance now? The performance is at position three, okay? At position three, okay? And the reason why you want to have this main keyword is because you want to let them know out of all the keywords they can be targeting, if there's only one keyword that you want to work on or that is important to this business, it's going to be this keyword, right? Obviously, there's other keywords that's going to be important, but what we want to do is we just want to highlight one. We are not going to go into like a full-blown keyword research and help them identify which keywords are important. We just want to pick one for now and let them know where is their main performance, right? So this is what we have done so far, okay? And we have done it for the customer or the potential client that we want to work with. So you want to have two competitors and you want to essentially do the same thing for these competitors. Okay, and the reason why you want to show them competitors is because you want to let them know these are what the, your, their competitors are doing, which is getting all these leads, which is getting all their chiropractor leads to their competitor's business instead of their own business. And you're trying to let the business owner know that these, the competitors, they are taking away their leads, right? And the way I like to do it, which I also recommend to you guys, is finding two competitors, the first competitor being a business that is just a little bit ahead of the client, right? They are not very far ahead. They're just a little bit ahead, okay? And the other competitor, you want to find a competitor that is way ahead, okay? 
because having a close competitor will show them this is the quick wins that if we were to work on optimizing your site, if we were to work on marketing on your site, you'll probably reach this stage first, right? Which is the close competitor. The close competitor is where we are trying to overtake, right? But having a really fierce competitor shows us the potential that the site can reach, right? Or the potential that the business can reach. And that's why I always prefer to have one close competitor and one competitor that is kind of like the industry market, market leader or within the location, um, it's a leader, right? So how you can find these two competitors, one way I like to do it is I like to go over to Ahrefs and click on organic competitors. And then this will show me, you know, kind of the competitors that Ahrefs thing is competing, right? I can open this up, but it seems like this is not going to be competing as much because you can see there's very little traffic here. Right. This, I think it's a different brand. You always want to make sure that the competitor that you're selecting, it's relevant. Right. So this is going to be a e-commerce store. I think shoes in soles. Yeah. Shoes in soles is irrelevant. Right. But if I look at, let's say, for example, chiropractic-uk.co.uk, like this is a massive site. Right. A massive, massive site. It has multiple locations. So if you look at the number of traffic this website has, it has 16,000, right? So this could be the industry leader that I can set for my competitor here. But I want to go down and take a look to see 553. The website that we are working with already has 523. So I want, to, I want to choose someone that has a higher organic traffic, right? So I can sort this by traffic, but I'm just going down the list here. Academy learning, doesn't make sense. Food care, I don't think this is a chiropractor site. Let me just go in and take a look. Yeah, so this is kind of like an e-commerce site. Insoles, 29,900. Okay, let me, let me filter this out by traffic. Okay, Amazon, 1,000 plus. Insoles, the house spa. Yep, so I'm not really finding a lot of, I'm not really finding competitors on Ahrefs. Most of the time, you will be able to find uh, competitors here. The other way of how I like to find competitors is just simply going into the main keyword. So for example, Chiropractor Abertin, I'm just going to open the SERPs up and see who is ranking for their main keyword, right? So for example, this is a brand. I'm going to go in and take a look. Yeah, so they don't have a lot of organic traffic as well. Let me go, let me check the rest of the stuff out. Yeah, um, organic keywords here, organic keywords. Okay, and let's take a look. So they don't have a lot of traffic, right? They don't have a lot of traffic. So this one, I definitely want to include it in here. Okay, this competitor. And then obviously like the market is UK, UK, and then you kind of go through the same exact thing that you went through earlier, right? So British Chiropractic Association, I'll list them down here. Location, so it seems like they have multiple locations. Is there any way that I can see their locations? Chiropractic care, contact, okay. Let's see, can I find all of their locations here? 40 registered officers, where is their officers though? Oh, okay. So these are all the locations they are. So they are in multiple locations, but this is an association. Actually, let me go in and take a look at their traffic. Yeah, yep. Yeah, so these are all the different locations within Aberdeen, but I'm guessing because they are a association, they're going to have a lot more clinics, right? But what I'm going to do, right, is I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste this in here because this is probably their main location that they are trying to target, which is Aberdeen, right? And probably these are all the competitors here, which again, when somebody is typing in Aberdeen Chiropractor and they are going to this site, this is traffic that our potential client could be getting, right? Which they are not. So that's why like they are a, com they are a competitor in a sense. They are competing for the online um, traffic. They are competing uh, against the uh, organic traffic. So in terms of the rest of the stuff here, I am going to put as the same because this seems like, you know, it's contact us. It doesn't have a call button here as well. So it's very, very similar towards this. And to be honest, you don't have to, you don't have to worry about, you know, their tech stack and, and stuff like that because 
you know, unless you want to pitch to multiple businesses, then you can do your homework for this as well. But yeah, so this is, I'm going to put this as not applicable because we are not going to be, you know, pitching to this business. If you want to, you can, but in this example, I'm not going to. And then you kind of run through the same thing as, you know, are they running LinkedIn ads? Are they running Facebook ads, TikTok ads, and Google ads, right? And so once you have done with this, right, uh, I'm going to show you an example after I'm done with this. All right, so I have filled in the one competitor, which is British Chiropractic Association. And, and with regards to, you know, some competitors, like for this example, I'm not able to find a competitor that is very close enough. And so what you can do is you can actually hide this column when you are doing your presentation and stuff like that, right? But one method that you can actually do to find the competitor, it's looking at the other services that the business is, uh, that the business offers. And, you know, instead of looking at the main keyword, which is chiropractor Aberdeen, you can look at some secondary keywords, which is sports massage Aberdeen, and trying to find if the competitors they are ranking for this keyword do they have more traffic than the current site that you're going to work with, right? So that's one way of how uh, I find more competitors within the market. But in this case, I'm not able to find one that has more traffic than the current site that I'm working with. And also, even if the site has more traffic, I want the site to be relevant, right? I don't just want the site to have more traffic than this and then provide this as a benchmark because if the website is not relevant, if the website is selling products instead of services, instead of chiropractic treatments, then that's not going to make sense for whoever that we're going to be uh, pitching this to. So do what makes sense. In this case, I'm only going to have one competitor. I'm going to hide this. Usually you will be able to find two. You'll be able to find more than two actually. But for this example, I don't have it. Uh, I, I'm not able to find one that is close enough that has more traffic, that has more organic performance than the current site. So I'm going to go with one, right? So essentially now what you have is you have a 360 view of what the business is, what it's offering, where it's offering the services to. You also know what kind of ads this is running and, and all the stuff like that. From here, you can actually show them that, hey, I know that you guys are running Google ads. Seems like your organic performance haven't been you know, increasing in the last few years at least. And this is the potential because we looked at one of your competitors, even though they are not a direct competitor, but this business is actually taking all this traffic away from your site, which means the leads that could be calling your site is actually calling leads on their website instead, right? And you can open this up. You can tell them that, you know, these are where the people are, are calling into. So you can see Riverside Chiropractic Cleaning is one of them, but not everybody will be calling this because somebody else will be calling Elevate Health Chiropractor. They will be calling other brands other than your own clinic, right? So as much as possible, we want to drive this organic uh, traffic to our website instead because then the main brand that the leads will be exposed to will be only our brand, right? So again, all this information I've mentioned earlier on, you can talk to them regarding finding out what's the main services or what's the main products that they're trying to offer. And you can also show them that this is the current benchmark that we have. This is what we potentially can go after. And so this shows you kind of like the, the things that we can do, right? So if you present this to them and, you know, they are interested to work with you, that's great. If you're selling this as a, as a kind of like a tripwire service and you are charging, like let's say, 50 to 100 bucks just to help them do a gap analysis, just to help them know where they stand in terms of the marketing landscape, that could work also, right? You can see here, this is the last thing that usually I like to do, which is I kind of like to run a mini campaign. And this mini campaign is basically, it's a series of me providing value to them, right? So one thing that uh, I always like to do is I like to provide um, a page title and a H1 update for, the main key for one of the keywords that I've identified. So it's really, really simple because what you're trying to do is you're just, again, trying to give as much value as much as possible, right? So what you can do is go over to their main website, their, their Ahrefs rankings, and you can essentially take a look at pages that are ranking in the page two position, right? So for example, in this case, let's say, let's say this site, right? This keyword, okay? What you want to do, right, is you want to identify a keyword that is not in page one, okay? which means, you know, this page is not getting traffic for the main keyword that they're trying to go after. So you can see this is in position 33, it's not on page one. 
Secondly, you want to make sure that the keyword makes sense, right? It's the bottom of the funnel keyword. And you can see pregnancy chiropractor. This is, you know, a very bottom of the funnel keyword where somebody is looking for a pregnancy chiropractor, right? And it has decent search volume. And also, last but not least, you want to make sure that the page matches the keyword, right? The intention of the page and the keyword is the same. So when somebody types in pregnancy chiropractor, they are looking for a pregnancy chiropractor, right? And so if you look at this page, this is a chiropractic and pregnancy, right? It is providing, is matching the search intent for this keyword. Okay, so once all of that is done, then you want to go in and basically type in the keyword here. So in this case, chiropractor, pregnancy chiropractor, right? So I'm going to put in this and then the URL will be this, okay? And then what you also want to do is you also want to take note of the position. So the position is currently in 33, okay? Position 33. Now, what I like to do is I like to provide value in different intervals, right? So the first thing that I would recommend them to do is I'll recommend them to change probably their page title, right? So for example, this is their page title, chiropractic and pregnancy, chiropractic, chiropractors, pelvic girdle. I would, in, I would tell them to include the keyword, uh, the keyword within the page title, right? So that is the first thing that I will do. And usually I'll send this to them in the first week, right? And then the second week, I'll tell them to optimize their header one, which is pregnancy pain treatment in Aberdeen. I'll maybe ask them to change it to something relevant to chiropractor and pregnancy, right? So that's the second thing that I'll do. Then the third thing that I'll do is probably I'll ask them to change the meta description, right? So these are the three values that I'm providing. And every single time, it depends on the interval. So I like to do, I like to send it one week at a time, right? So this is sent over a course of three weeks, right? And what I'm telling them is, hey, I'm doing a free mini campaign for you, right? This is essentially what we will do if we were to be working together, okay? This is the main keyword that we are trying to rank for, right? And it's currently on position 33. The first week, what you're gonna do is you wanna change the page title. And then I give them the instruction. The second week, I'll tell them, hey, we need to change the header one. And then the third week, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell them to change the meta description, right? If you do this well enough, ideally, their position from 33 should go up, right? Irregardless of whether it's going up by how many, if it's going to page one, that's awesome because this page didn't get any traffic from before. Now it is currently it is getting traffic, right? So it's a proof of concept that by working with you, you can increase their organic performance, right? And this is just a small example. Now, this is for SEO related stuff. This doesn't have to be SEO related stuff because this is how you can actually pitch any kind of services. The main framework is the same. You always want to provide value, provide value, provide value. Let them see the value that you provide and then let them decide whether you guys want to work, like whether do they want to work with you. Most often than not, you know, the response is, is always good. It's always positive, right? So this is why I have this kind of like a mini campaign here. It's basically Jab, Jab, Hook. It's kind of, you know, the Gary, if you have read Gary V's book, Jab, 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 Right Hook. It's kind of the same similar concept where I'm giving, 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 and then I'm asking for something back in return, right? So this is essentially how you come up with the entire competitor gap analysis, which you can, again, offer this to potential people that you want to work with, or you can offer this as a service to sell, to charge for. Yeah, that's, that's how we do it. So that's all for this video. If you like what you see, please help me to press the like button and comment down in the comment section. Let me know if there's anything that I'm missing out. And remember to subscribe to the channel so every single time when a new video comes up, you'll be first to get notified. With that being said, that's all. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay safe, take care, and cheers.